Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a couple of jobs in, one small job, one bigger job. So this is a small job. This actually came out of a industrial type cleaner. I'll show you actually, because I have some photos of where this came from. It came from this machine. So we can see the PCB there, how it's connected up. This is some sort of current sense you can see here, some connections. So this is mains powered from what I see. Yeah, that's the machine, some sort of cleaner. Can you see it? Okay. That's the board as we took it off the machine. This is just to really show us where all the connections are. And the guy said something's fell off the board and he brought me this. And my first thought was, well, that's not all that's fell off because this is a base off a capacitor. And the capacitor is here. So this is what fell off, 1000 microfarad. We'd have to look at the code to get the voltage. And it's come from here. Yeah, this has come from here. And I think you can clearly see that somebody has soldered this on. I don't think they've done a very good job of it because it looks like they've actually got the pins shorted against the can. They might be lucky they didn't. But that goes there, okay? So that's what the problem is with this one. And you can see that the actual pad on the board has been ripped off, okay? So the main thing with this, or the job I'm gonna do first, is to actually replace this. I'll see if I actually have one of this value. Otherwise, I may have to see if I can do something with this one for now. And I want to give this back to him so he can just try it. It looks like, to me, bridge rectifier. What are these capacitors? Are they high voltage ones? Yeah, 400 volts, two of them. Okay, not in parallel, but in series, switch mode transformer. So this is a power supply, so somewhere the live and the neutral comes through this bridge rectifier, probably through this, could be um, resistor, I don't think it's a thermistor. Looks like there's also some sort of inductor here i'm not sure this is like a book converter though i think that is probably a filter on the input with these two capacitors it might even be connected between the two capacitors and they may in fact actually be in parallel okay chip tny so this is a switch mode controller tny to 850G, okay, that's driving this power supply. This diode is probably in the snubber or the circuit that handles the back EMF. Could be in the power supply for that. I haven't looked this up, up to isolated. But we can see, basically we have a switch mode power supply and this is gonna be on the output. Yeah, you see the diode there and output. So I could probably, because there's a lot of space in here, just fit a normal through hole capacitor and wire it across. I might well do that actually. This chamfered edge is the positive end, we can see here. Another capacitor, it's not 100 volts. This is actually 100 microfarad, 25 volts. Okay, so if I just probe around here, I can figure out, or I can just look up the data sheet for this and see what voltage this is, okay? So yeah, I'm going to try and fit just a normal through hole capacitor here. And then I probably can power this up sufficiently just to make sure that this switch mode is running. And if it is running, I'll give him this back and then let him see if it works or not. Okay, so we have a plan. So I'm just trying to figure out what voltage this capacitor is. I've searched for AFP capacitor series data sheet. And we see various links, but this one says metallized polypropylene or series table aluminium electrolytic. Let's see if we can find something. I don't think it's one of these. 
PFC capacitors. No, look, that's those sort of things. So I can't quickly find the rating for this capacitor, but I don't think it's a problem. Because if we look at the PCB, this is a 25 volt, 100 microfarads. This end connects to here. Okay. And this end connects to here. So the two are in parallel with each other. So it can't be anything less than 25 volts. I wouldn't have thought. Or at least if I put 25 volts in or better, well, it's going to be fine. So that's what I'm going to put in there. Other than that, we can make a few checks. So we have live and neutral, I would say, L and N. Yeah. If that's correct, these should go to the bridge rectifier AC terminals. Yeah, that goes to there. That goes to there. Okay. Looks like, in fact, we can clearly see that the neutral comes via this thing. It looks a bit like a resistor to here. This reads, let's see. 10 ohms, okay. Output of the bridge rectifier, does that go to here? No. Okay. Let's see. It's a bit difficult to probe both sides here because these are through hole in this. It's SMD, but I think I can see pretty clearly that this track's going to this, I think. And then a track comes under here. Hmm, that doesn't go to there. Well, it does through a diode. Do you know this is looking almost like a PFC circuit? No, it doesn't connect to there. Okay, I can't just quite figure that out at the moment which way round it is, but I'm sure if we need to, we will do. Look at this diode here now. We can see that actually comes from the high voltage pin on here. So this is not some sort of power supply back into that chip. And here, look, from the live, you see these three resistors in series, which are 100K, three of them in series. I think you'll find that's actually providing power to start this up. Okay. There are also a couple of fuses on here, so we should test these. Yeah, that's fine. And that's fine. Just looking at this datasheet, TNY284. So we can see it has a built-in switching MOSFET rated 725 volts, a online switcher with line compensated overload power. Okay, so this is the output from your bridge rectifier, plus and minus. This is where your large smoothing capacitors would go. Datasheet says for the 285P or D, 230 volts AC, okay. Input could be between 865 and 265. So that is definitely the large smoothing capacitors. Power here, and then through the primary, the transformer switches through this MOSFET. It has a feedback from the output, you can see it here. And we see another diode here back to here. This is probably, this is the back EMF, so that's the diode I can see, a snubber network via a capacitor resistor. And that's it, actually. So this doesn't have, like, a auxiliary power supply on this chip. That's why the circuit is so simple. So we know this is a power supply. We have here a microcontroller of some sort. Yeah, STM85. Zero, I don't, oh, is it 8.5? Hard to read. STM, I would say, 8.5.003, but it's a bit of a strange 5. That happens with some funny markings these days. So this and the lower voltage parts of the circuit are going to be driven, or rather powered from this power supply. There must be some regulator somewhere, because 
although these are rated at 25 volts i don't think they will be actually 25 volts coming out here it will be lower but this will be running on a lower voltage again most likely i see another inductor here there's nothing on the back so if that's a book converter again i can't see what's driving it this part of the circuit we can trace quite easily so we should do it so we know the resistor's okay we have power getting to the ac terminals on this bridge so we can just test this and that looks good and then we can also test the other side that looks good although i can't easily follow the tracks i know that these go to here and i'm assuming these capacitors are connected across yeah it's just hard to follow the tracks being hidden away under there okay we'll assume the transformer is okay they normally are we can say from the source end of here goes to here the drain goes to here and that's going via the transformer winding so it's at least intact we know that much this diode well we can easily test that that's okay i won't worry too much about the opto isolator right now this one reads 0 0.182 so that's a shotgun diode which is what you'd expect here because of high frequency switching and then the cathode of this we can see it comes to here and here so we know this is the positive rail even though it's not marked as a plus that chamfered edge basically told me anyway and the negative end here and we'll also see that to here because the transformer secondary effectively is a short so we know the transformer secondary is also intact i'm not sure what voltage is coming out of this but we do know it powers this lot i think we know i mean there's another connector here which would suggest there's another voltage regulator somewhere in here because i imagine this actually runs at a lower voltage there's something here it's a little bit hidden under there yeah i can't easily read that okay this actually oh it says motor so yeah this is a mosfet which is driving the motor can you see that there okay so the gate will be controlled by this lot makes sense and this switches the motor right let's clean all this up then let's see what it looks like we can clearly see now this is all one this is obviously just the pad which is exposed copper obviously this is all underneath the solder mask so if we solder from either of these points to here that'll be fine i've just tested this this actually is low esr show you so positive negative although it doesn't actually matter because this is ac look there 0 0.008 it's very low esr okay let's just zero the meter okay what do we have yeah 0 0.05 I mean, that's fine so if i solder it like so and then fold it back over so it was effectively double back and fit here that shouldn't be a problem you can see where the power supply board or pcb comes out of here there's quite a bit of room in there i mean we have this big current sensor thing and we also have these capacitors as well so as long as it's below that in fact it's below the transformer really i don't see this being a problem to put it here okay 
Of course, I mounted it a little bit too far over. It happens, yeah. Okay, so with a little bit of tweaking, there we go. I'll put a little bit of tape just over the metal cap there. I mean, generally speaking, this is not connected to the capacitor in any way, but hey, why not? There we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of hot snot under this just to hold it in place because I can only assume that this was damaged originally by vibration. I don't see why it would just fall off. Uh, just while the glue is warming up, I'm just going to make sure I have a good connection. So positive here. It's a positive here, yes and negative on the capacitive i can get down under here still to negative yeah okay so i have a good connection on that i'll glue it down then i'm just going to power this up then with some mains put the current limiter on and just make sure that we have an output voltage here if we do then i'll give this back to the owner and let's see if it works okay so a bit of hot snot hold the capacitor down that'll be fine i'm not too worried about these i could have actually put the heat shrink a bit longer to be honest but this is low voltage and isolated from the mains and the thing it fits into is all plastic construction so i really have no issue with that to be honest you guys well if you have an issue you know where to tell me okay Right, let's connect this thing up and see if it actually works. Okay, so this is just one of my spare test leads with crimp terminals on, live neutral, okay. But neutral and live on here. That's just connected to one of these. I have a lead plugged in, but it's not switched on at the moment. You may say, well, it'll be live possibly in one terminal anyway, because the switch may be a single pole. I happen to know it is a double pole switch, but anyway, I have a isolated supply on the bench, so there is no live or neutral, just AC. Okay, so I'll put this onto the output from the capacitor. You can see the multimeter there on volts. This lead is just clipped onto the negative end of the capacitor, so that goes to the multimeter on the black lead. We can see the light bulb, it's set to limit, so we're going to switch this thing on. And we have it says OL, probably my multimeter just slightly uh, dodgy switch. I need to clean that actually. Let's go again. 5 volts DC. So it's actually a 5 volt supply. I don't need this big capacitor on here, but wow, there's plenty of room. Okay. I could replace it with something smaller, of course. So that's working. 5 volts seems correct. That's why I didn't see another voltage regulator down here for the processor. 5 volts is what it wants. Okay, so that's ready to go back to the customer. And I'll let you know if it worked. I have another job from the same guy. So we'll do that on the next repair video. So once again, fairly simple one. But you can charge a reasonable amount for this. I mean, those industrial cleaners are not particularly cheap. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down there. And I'll see you all soon again on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now, guys.